in. It's a Sunday morning and uh, we're meeting Martin today and he is part of the Self-Realization Fellowship. I will let you know everything that I know about the Self-Realization Fellowship right now. Well, that pretty much sums it up. So let's go learn about it. How's it going? How you doing? We're gonna hug it. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Where are we right now? Well, right now we're on the grounds of Self-Realization Fellowship's Hollywood Temple, but we're in India Hall. So, uh, I know nothing about Self-Realization Fellowship. Okay. You want to educate me some? Because <laughs> I desperately need it. All right, I'll tell you a little bit what, about what I know. Cool, man. Well, I can't wait. I've been in LA since 99. 14, 15 years? Yeah, yeah. Were you SRF before you came here? I was. Um, I happened to grow up in an SRF family where my dad was really into that around the time I was born. He was, he was into Eastern things and started doing, you know, researching yoga and meditation and stuff like that. So your whole family was SRF growing up? Well, on my mom's side of the family, there was a pretty devout Catholic faith. How did that work? It was interesting but my both my parents were really open and supportive of each other and trying to create a space for me to not feel like I had to do one thing or the other just whatever I preferred uh, I, could, I could do. Did people in school know that you were SRF and that you meditated <laughs> or did they have any clue what that was? No they didn't. Um, we hadn't hit that big yoga boom that we have nowadays back then, so talking about yoga or meditation was pretty foreign to folks. Even I was a vegetarian too, and even that was pretty weird for anyone that I met. All my friends thought I was a little strange in that in that manner, so. I know nothing about SRF. Okay. Am I even allowed to call it SRF? <laughs> like, are we on that familiar of a term? Right. What is the foundation of Self-Realization Fellowship as a faith? You know, Self-Realization Fellowship was, was founded in the 20s by Paramahansa Yogananda. So most of everything that we do here is based on his teachings. He came here from India in the 20s and found quite a bit of popularity in terms of speaking on the similarities between Eastern and Western uh, religions and philosophies. Yogananda, is that where yoga comes from? Like all of <laughs> yoga? Some people credit Yogananda with bringing yoga to the West, yes, but yoga's been around for a really, really long time, so no, he's not the, the founder so of that. He's just, uh, he's just sort of one of the pioneers of bringing it to the West. Definitely, yeah. And is he the gentleman that's in all of the pictures? You'll see his face quite a few places around here today. What is the philosophy that drives Self-Realization Fellowship? The thing that drives it is realization of yourself, so getting to know yourself what your purpose is, you know, how you relate to the world that you live in, and to do it through various techniques, or meditation techniques. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the service before we go in there, just so sure. you, you know awesome. what the format is. Um, first, we're going to go into the temple, which has uh, been here since the time that Yogananda was actually here in 1942. He used to give services in there. So that's really nice. It's this really cool space that's been here for a long time with people coming to meditate and come to lecture services. And just so you know, we start every service with a brief period of meditation. If you're new to Self-Realization Fellowship and you don't have meditation techniques, then during the short period of silence following the chant, just talk to God in the language of your heart and soul as his child, which you are. to get centered in, in myself and, and what I'm about and to reconnect with that. It's sort of like maybe I went to sleep and, and forgot about it a little bit and as I wake up 
It's just to take that extra time to really focus my mind and my body on how I want to be that day. And how, how do you want to be? Like, what's the day that you felt, I've really hit the mark today for who I want to be? For me, a big one is, is keeping my calm. You know, a lot of people have say, oh, you have a nice calm voice, you know, you're very relaxing. And I recognize that in myself, that that's just an energy that I like to have with me. And so when I- I have the opposite. <laughs> I, you are so chill and I'm just like, <laughs> how would you calm me down? How do we fix this? Oh, well, I don't know. I, I mean, is it a bad thing? Now that I'm looking at you, yeah. <laughs> If you're really wanting to try and find find that calm and that peace, I think meditation can help. Is there a point where where life can become a meditation and you just sort of are in that place all the time? I say that's really what the goal is. And for me, for me it definitely is what the goal is and what I what I see the advantage of doing that routine of morning and night is to get you to that place. Night. There's a stage, and that's where the monastic's gonna be speaking from. What is a monastic? Uh, a monastic is, it, within Self-Realization Fellowship, is someone who's taken vows to be dedicated to it 24-7 in service of the organization and Haramsa Yogananda's teachings. Yeah, it's a big commitment. It's, it's a lecture and not, not a sermon, right? What is there a lecture on? Every Sunday they pick a different topic, usually having to do with something going on in life, you know, uh, relationships, how to find more peace in your life, um, you know, various various topics they pick. And I think they call it, it's a lecture service because they're, they're kind of giving their perspective on uh, Yogananda's teachings and how they can apply to that subject matter. And then they also reference all sorts of other teachings and how it all relates to that subject matter. Brother was wondering about Soul Pancake and, you know, what does that mean? I watched a lot of Zach's videos during the week and uh, it was really, really heartwarming, all these different religions. You know, there's the, the same basic human goodness in everyone and we're all trying to, we're all just trying to do the best we can. There's an altar and on the altar, um, Paramahansa Yogananda comes from a line of gurus, which is like, they're, they're teachers, so you, he has, we have a picture of Yogananda up there, but we have a picture of his teacher, his guru. Right in the center, one of Yogananda's focal points when he came here was to point out the similarities between Eastern and Western philosophies, Christianity and Hinduism mainly. So you have a picture of Jesus Christ there in the center and a picture of Bhagavan Krishna, who I was talking about earlier, uh, to represent both those two, the union of the East and the West. You can be any religion and come to SRF, right? You can, yeah. I kind of think of SRF as an umbrella of, of all faiths. You can have a Yogananda and, and have him be inspiring. You can have a Jesus Christ and have him, him be inspiring. You can have a Bhagavan Krishna and have him be inspiring. You can have a, a Buddha and have him be inspiring. All these, all these folks are just examples for us to see that, that, that of what we might be able to come, become ourselves. And we have people from all different faiths that come here. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Mother, Mother, Friend, Friend, Beloved God, Beloved God, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Bhagavan Krishna, Bhagavan Krishna, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Our Guru, Our Guru, Paramahansa Yogananda, Paramahansa Yogananda, Saints of all religions, Saints of all religions, We bow to you all. We bow to you all. So I found this shady spot under a tree because I myself have realized that it's hot outside today. And I've also realized that this is a really cool place and it's a beautiful blend of different world religions that you don't really think would necessarily mix, but they do because the teachings are very similar. Now I've realized that I have a lot of work to do before I can actually meditate. I'm just gonna sit here and see if I can be quiet for more than five seconds. No, not yet, but soon, soon. It's my first day, what do you expect? Soul Pancake, subscribe.